Zoom with Florian Simon from Bonus Mikrotechnik and I'm the Product Manager here. Welcome to our technical webinar series. This series is about setting up a microcreating system using our components. Today we take a look at one of our kits. In the upcoming videos we will talk about the system setup, important features and common challenges. Now here's the overview of the MP Advanced set. Let's start with the MP Multi board. This is the MP Multi board. Into the driver section, um, it can be implemented the MP Low driver, which is this one, the MP High driver, or the MP High driver 4. The MP Low driver is rather addressing low flow rates or the low performance, the lower performance of the micro pump. The High driver rather addresses the higher performance of the micro pump. And with a high driver 4, we've got the opportunity to run the micro pump at high performances and up to four micro pumps at a time. Besides, here are the sockets for the micro pump cables, which is this one. And the micro pump can be directly connected in this area. For the valve driver section, we've got here the valve driver that is able to run up to two valves. The valve driver regulates this shape memory alloy valve by Takazago. Next to the valve driver socket, is the connection for the valve cable. The flow on pressure sensors can be implemented here, which is this SLF3S0600 F flow, liquid flow sensor by Zerion and the pressure sensor by Honeywell. To complete the system, there are some fluidic only components, the MP damper, small hose clamps to seal the tubing connectors and the tube, microfluidic chips and connectors for the microfluidic chip. Okay, let's plug the system together. We start connecting the pump driver. In this case, we use the high driver 4 as it is the most versatile one. Next, the valve driver. Please note the right orientation, pin 1, pin 1. Now the multiboard is set up in general. Let's switch to the fluidic components, the micro pump. In this case, I connect the MP damper and the liquid flow sensor. I need to screw the tubing connectors into the liquid flow sensor. So now I connect the MP6 to the MP damper. As the micro pump is a pulsating micro pump, we have developed a small flow damper to ease the flow that comes out of the damper. as the readout of the flow sensor might collide with the pulsation of the micropump. With this fluidic setup, I'm already able to read out the flow rate of the complete system. As a next component, I implement pressure sensor. For that, I'm using such a Y connector to get the value of the system pressure. Now I want to be able to run liquid into a fluidic chip. Therefore, I take the fluidic chip, connect the tubing connector, one and two, and another tubing to combine it with the system. As the micropump MP6 is able to run liquids and gases, in this example, I would like to be able to distinguish between liquid and gas later on. This is why I use these two two two-way valves. For that I use again a Y connector. As the fluidic setup is mainly done, we can start with the electronic connections. I start with a pump cable and I choose channel 3 and 4 for that. Please make sure that you have got the right orientation for the cable and the connector, and then you can connect the cable to the flex cable of the micro pump. Again, please make sure that the orientation is correct and be careful with a very thin flex cable of MP6 micro pump. Afterwards, I connect the two valves. Again, please note the right orientation. 
and then the liquid flow sensor. And the last electronic connection, again with the right connection, again with the right orientation, the pressure sensor. As a summary, we've got the opportunity to distinguish between two input channels run by the MP6 micropump through a MP damper for lowering the pulsation of the MP6, then re reading out the flow with the liquid flow sensor by Caesarean, and measuring the pressure sensor with the ABP pressure sensor by Honeywell, and run liquid through a multi microfig chip by microfig chip shop. For a good contrast, showing the function of the system, I use blue colored water. So now I'm able to choose whether I want to promote the blue liquid or air. As the multiboard setup is done, we now connect the multiboard to our PC and making sure that we've got enough power, I plug in an external power supply. As the system is now set up, let's have a look at the software. In the top left corner, you can select the COM port for your device. In this case, it is COM12. Underneath, you can select the drivers for pumps. We've chosen the high driver 4, so we select that one. And as you can see, the control panel below opens up and gives you access to the pump parameters for adjusting the pump. Next to the COM port and driver selection, there is the valve section. As soon as you've plugged in the valve driver and valves, you can open and close valves here by switching the radio buttons. Next to the valve section, there is the sensor section. You can read out pressure, liquid flow and thermal conductivity. For activating those sensors, you need to check the boxes. As soon as you've checked the boxes, the measurement starts. There are two sensor calibrations possible for the liquid flow sensor, water and IPA. You can select those below the valve sections under sensor calibration. Under the timer tab, you can do a little bit of automation. You can set an on and off time for each single pump and by activating the status, the pumps would run in such loop. The graph tab displays the pressure and liquid flow value. In the data log tab, you can write values from the sensor readout into a text file. The lowest sampling time is one second. The file will be generated in the folder from which you've executed the multiboard app.